Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Thank you so much for tuning in. As you all know, my name is Mike and this is my channel. So what are we uh, talking about today? So today I want to talk about something that affects, I, I believe, the most of the Tesla drivers out there, both in Canada and the US. Now, as most of you know, if you've seen some of my videos, including the Tesla full review video, uh, we bought our Tesla, my wife and I bought our Tesla. Uh, we took possession June 26, 2021. The vehicle was built June 18th, 2021. So I knew way ahead of time that it would most likely be radarless. Um, I knew it was being custom built, and therefore I put two and two together and thought, well, this one's going to be radarless. I knew we were gonna have the PBP problem, otherwise known as phantom braking phenomenon. So I have read a lot of video, and I know I've been saying this in the last few videos that I'm, I'm coming out with this video, and it's just so much research because there's so many people uh, saying different things about it. I have emailed Tesla uh, numerous times uh, about the problem and I have not really received a response uh, from them other than the standard, you know, um, oh, we'll have our, our media relations uh, get back to you. And as everyone knows, they no longer have a media relations department. So it, I'm really being given the runaround here now. Phantom braking, uh, from what I've gathered, from what I've researched, and from what I know by watching other review videos and other people talk about their phantom braking experiences, phantom braking happens when the computer says, uh, or sorry, when the cameras say, hey computer, there's something there, and the computer tells the vehicle to um, slow down, or in some cases, stop. Now, in my personal experience, I have had this happen about uh, once a week, once every two weeks, and uh, it's not generally a huge uh, deal. Um, I have been told by the insurance company where I live, which is uh, British Columbia, Canada, that should somebody remind me if my vehicle were to stop, it, it is obviously their fault because they were following too close behind. You should always be far enough behind uh, the vehicle in front of you where if they were to do an emergency braking maneuver, um, they would have time to stop without running into you or without you running into them if, if vice versa. Now, this isn't a driving tutorial. I'm not telling you guys how to drive. I'm not teaching you guys how to drive. Uh, you all know how to drive. And uh, if you're driving a Tesla and you hang a bag of fruit from the steering wheel, apparently you don't have to drive at all. The Tesla will drive itself. Uh, unless, of course, you're going around a corner and your car crashes because a bag of fruit drops from the steering wheel. Uh, I'm kidding. In my last video uh, that I released, uh, we talk about um, the uh, crash investigation uh, from the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration into the autopilot system uh, with uh, the Teslas from 2014 to 2021. That's in another video. We're talking about this right now. Uh, phantom braking uh, is a huge concern uh, for myself. It's also a huge concern for uh, tens of thousands of other Tesla drivers out there. Uh, for me, uh, it seems to happen a lot when the sun is either just to the side of the vehicle, but slightly in front of the windshield or directly in front of the vehicle. Uh, it doesn't happen at night, I've noticed, even when the uh, high beams are off. And I've noticed now with the most recent update, you can actually turn the high beam, uh, the automatic high beams off uh, when it is in autopilot mode. Now, as um, most of you have seen from the most recent video that I just uploaded, um, we don't have full self-drive yet in Canada because of quote-unquote uh, Elon Musk says subtle uh, driving laws, so, subtle differences in the driving laws between Canada and the US. Now, uh, we've been waiting well over uh, 10 months to a year. Uh, I believe, uh, if I remember correctly, and I just put this video out, so I feel silly saying this, I, I believe it's been a year now, uh, just over a year that we've been waiting for full self-drive. Now. Back to the PBP phenomenon, or the um, phantom braking phenomenon. It happens because the cameras think that it sees something, a shadow or something in the roadway, uh, and the car brakes. Now, in my opinion, or in my case, the car has never done an emergency braking maneuver, as it's called professionally. 
it has just slowed down. Um, and I have left it to the point where I just let it slow down and then it literally speeds up again when the computer or when the cameras tell the computer, okay, there's nothing there, let's resume. It'll just get right back up to speed and continue on its way. I do find this rather annoying, especially when people are following too close behind me because I know that if my Tesla were to think that it sees something and hit the brakes, that person's coming through the back of my car. Uh, insurance or no insurance, it's still my safety. It's the safety of my uh, three kids and my wife. So um, we're definitely trying to mitigate uh, any um, potential disaster by simply just manually driving when people are driving too close behind us. Now, uh, I did pay for the full self-drive uh, feature. In Canada, it was $10,600. I did it because even though there are minor problems, which I will discuss um, in two other videos, what I like about the Tesla, what I don't like about the Tesla, um, there's, there's, a, there's a handful of things I like and a handful of things I don't, but I do trust Tesla. I trust the technology. Um, if I didn't, I would never have bought a Tesla. And, and that's the thing, people who don't get the full self-drive package, whether because it's too expensive or not, if they say, well, I, I don't trust the technology, um, I'm sorry, but don't, don't drive a Tesla. Um, it's as simple as that because there's so much technology that's packed into the computers of a Tesla. Uh, if you don't trust the technology, you shouldn't be driving a Tesla. Um, it, and I shouldn't say you shouldn't be driving a Tesla. Of course, you, you can drive a Tesla and not trust the technology, but to me, it's just kind of, it's like, why, why drive a Tesla then? Um, so I, I trust it. it. It's a good vehicle. It's been a good vehicle since we took delivery back at uh, June 26, 2021. And uh, I continue to, to trust it. It does not happen as often to us as it does with other vehicles. So it almost makes me think I would like to know those vehicles that it's happening to a lot. Have they done a recent software update? Um, because I know I did the very first software update, which came about two weeks after we got our car. We got a software update and I don't, it just had minor bug fixes. And then I think there was another fix in there for something, but it, it just seemed like it, it doesn't really happen to us that often. Even my wife said that it happens about once every a uh, couple of trips that she takes. Um, as some of you know, if you follow my Mike W. Stowe's vlogs channel, uh, we drive uh, about an hour each way uh, to and from work. So it's about two hours of driving each time we drive to our business. Um, it is about 75 kilometers each way. Uh, so we're looking at about 150 kilometers plus a little bit um, every day that we uh, drive into our business. It's a lot of driving, which is one of the reasons why we bought a Tesla. Um, speaking of which, I, I do have another video coming out, uh, the full cost of home charging uh, with a Tesla as well, as well as the different percentages, like from 30% to 80% and 20% to 80% and all of that. Um, and I'll show you how to figure the cost of, of uh, charging a Tesla at home as well. So uh, we'll go through that in that video. But I just wanted to, to put out this video about um, about the uh, um, phantom braking phenomenon um, because I really felt like uh, it needed to be said. I, I understand there's thousands of other videos out there. People have put out videos way before me and that's fine. Um, you know, I just wanted to say my piece that it doesn't really happen that often to us. Uh, only once in, uh, only once in, I can say once in every a uh, couple of road trips, really, uh, from my experience and from talking to my wife, it, it only happens once every so often. So I don't know if that's because we did the most recent software update or if it's just our vehicle. Uh, I knew it was going to happen before I hit that order now button or place order button. I knew. Uh, and I've spoken to my wife about this because I had done months of research. I've watched all of uh, your guys' videos. Uh, if you've put out videos on Tesla, I've watched them all. Um, you know, I, so I knew I knew the ins and outs of owning a Tesla even before I hit that place order button. Um, but that's just something that I do before I purchase something this expensive. Um, nonetheless, I would think for uh, eighty to ninety thousand dollars Canadian, ninety five thousand dollars plus Canadian, I would think that they would want to fix this problem as quickly as possible. And maybe Elon is trying to fix this problem as quickly as possible. In either case, um, I don't think that there's ever been a story of phantom braking um, with the vehicles that have radar in them. 
Uh, it does make me wonder if one day uh, Tesla is going to bring back the radar. I highly doubt it at this point. I have been told by a few select people that have inside knowledge that Tesla did in fact keep all the wiring and everything for the radar there. Like all of the wiring harnesses and everything is in place. It's physically just the radar that is not there itself. It makes me wonder if maybe, you know, what's being said about Tesla at this point is true and that the radar was taken out because of the part shortage and they just decided, well, we're not ready for the uh, Tesla vision only system, but let's do it anyway. And they just rush, 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 rush. And now we have this huge phantom braking problem because it's only the people that don't have a radar that are complaining of phantom braking. Now, I may have missed some stories here and there from, from people that possibly had phantom braking issues uh, with the radar but I know in our 2017 uh, Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk um, we have the radar we have the uh, adaptive cruise control the lane assist and all of that um, there's no autopilot or full self drive obviously in that vehicle but we have never once had a phantom uh, braking uh, issue in that vehicle. Uh, same with our uh, 2020 um, Toyota 4Runner. We've never had a phantom braking and, the, and there is radar in that car and it's got the, the sensors as well, the sonic sensors. We've never had an issue with phantom braking in either of those two vehicles. So it makes me think that it's only the vehicles uh, without the radar. Uh, having said that, thank you so much for watching. That comes to the end. Uh, that brings us to the end of another video. Um, I appreciate you all watching uh, my videos. I appreciate the subscribers. Uh, please leave a comment. I take all comments, good or bad, and it's a learning curve for me um, starting this YouTube channel. And I, I just hope to put out better and better content as I go along. As I learn more, I put out better content. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, bye for now.